Hello students and uh, auditors, I welcome you again in this AAA class and in this video we are going to discuss some basic overview of the audit, basic overview, some you know some basic overview of audit, it's just a, a recap of some of a uh, few of the things and in this video lecture you will be having the very much important area and that is this frequently repeated questions in your AAA exam. So a very much important glimpse the insight of your AAA exam. Now uh, let's start with this. Uh, uh, let's start with this, a very short recap of the audit. Since you're already aware of the fact that what auditor performs, what auditors do, what are the procedures you have studied in your AA exam. So this is basically the recap, okay? Auditor is external to the company. Obviously, it is the external firm and it is called firm of accountants. It is firm of accountants. Okay, this is the firm of accountants. Audit is for the satisfaction of shareholders on the financial statements. And if nothing is mentioned, financial statement is always of one year. Financial statement is always of one year if nothing is mentioned. However, financial statements are of six months as well, but in the scope of the audit, it is always of one year. There may be misstatements in the financial statements, misstatements. What is misstatement? Misstatement is actually difference. Misstatement is actually what? Difference. It's actually the difference between accounting standards It's actually the difference between accounting standards and accounting adopted by the company. And uh, accounting adopted by company. For example, that uh, IS2, let's take the common and a short example. IS2 says that inventory should be valued at lower of cost NRV. Let's say cost is dollar ten and NRV is dollar six. So inventory should be valued at dollar six. If I have, if I have valued it at dollar ten, that is misstatement by four, and that misstatement is overstatement. So misstatement may be over or under, and this misstatement either due to it's not necessarily that uh, management is intentionally making the misstatement, not at all. It's quite maybe possible that misstatement is either due to, due to error or due to fraud. It quite may be possible that misstatement is due to error or fraud, right? But what is misstatement? Something against the accounting standard. That's it, misstatement. Now let's move ahead. Auditor expresses the opinion, opinion, after the audit, not the guarantee. That is what is actually the opinion of the auditor. And obviously it is on the financial statements. Auditors should have a critical attitude. What do you mean by the term critical attitude students? That you have to maintain the neutral mindset. You have to think that uh, this financial statements, for example, I am Harris and if I have prepared the financial statements, so you should not be believing in advance that this financial statement is prepared by Harris and if it is okay. This is prepared by Harris and if this is not okay. This is not true and fair. You should not believe that in advance. You should have a critical attitude and you should have a neutral mindset. The independent mindset. You should have independent mindset. And you should think that he should, he auditor should think that there may be, there may be, there may be, there may be error, there may be fraud, there may be everything genuine. So you do not need to believe in advance that financial statement is true and fair or not true and fair, not at all. You just, just, just have to maintain a neutral mindset. And uh, there is my very famous dialogue I used to say in my classes of audit that simply remember, this is my simply remember, don't trust, verify. Don't trust, don't trust, verify. This is a very golden rule. I have summarized the entire audit in this specific, uh, in this saying. What is this? Don't trust. You have to verify. Let me give you the example. 
let's say for example let's say uh, for example that i have um prepared the financial statements and i have provided it to you this is the financial statements uh, let's say for example uh, you are assuming that this financial statement is prepared by haris anif will you trust no verify you don't have to trust you have to verify for example i am saying that uh, there are 100 units uh, in the inventory warehouse will you trust yes sir okay no not at all verify go visit and count simply that's a verification i have said that uh, this is the product i have purchased it this is my property will you believe no you will ask for the invoice verify don't trust on the management verify and how will you verify simply you will have to apply the audit procedures because you are the auditor you have to verify through the application of audit procedures and then express the opinion and then express the opinion on financial statement so to check the financial statement audit apply the audit procedures and then express the opinion on financial statements whether it is true and fair so this is basically the very simple thing that you have to verify don't no need to trust on the management okay now let's move ahead this is audit procedure students i am not teaching in detail this is the glimpse of the recap the glimpse of the recap you can say of the accounting of the uh, audit papers uh, which you have studied in your uh, paper double this is just the glimpse okay audit procedures what are basically the audit procedures these are actually the actions actions performed by the auditor these are actually the actions performed by the auditor or you can say actions like working of auditor working of auditor and what are the workings of auditor you can simply remember by this mnemonic Cairo, C A I R O, Cairo, I three R two, Cairo. This is a very simple mnemonic, and these are the actions of the auditor. Now let's now let's study in um, in this abbreviations. That is C C for confirmation. It involves obtaining the confirmation from the third party, like customer, like supplier. like bank for example for example you are the auditor right and you are having a dialogue with me i am the finance director and you are the audit partner and uh, you are having a dialogue with me you are having a discussion and you are asking sir mr haris what's your bank balance not me personally the the bank balance of the organization so i have told you that uh, there are 10 million dollars in the company's bank account you are surprised 10 million dollars so you can confirm it from the bank yes confirmation letter you can confirm okay so this is the confirmation next analytical procedure this is c a i r o cairo this is the working of the auditor c for confirmation a for analytical procedure you have studied these things in your double exam okay what analytical procedure means that means compare the figures and investigate the unusual difference compare the figures let's say for example let's say for example it's 20 uh, this this is 20 x2 this is 20 x3 this is 20 x4 and this is 20 x5 you are auditing obviously 20 x5 all right so there is gross profit margin and let's say it was 51% then fall to 49% then 53% then in this year it is let's say 82% by considering this you will be shocked what is this what is this you will be shocked yes how is it possible so you th this is something unusual difference investigated and you should cast doubt that either sales may be overstated or cogs may be understated it quite may be possible it quite may be possible that sales may be overstated cogs may be understated so this cast doubt 
analytical procedure. So you will be coming to me, Mr. Harris, and if what is this? Your COGS is not in line with your past trend. Please uh, explain this thing. So I will have to explain you. This is known as analytical procedure. Confirmation analytical procedure. Then inquiry. Inquiry means, inquiry means asking the questions from the client entity staff. For example, you ask me, Mr. Harrison, if what is your bank balance? And I have told you that $10 million, this is inquiry. And if you will not be believing, you can confirm it from the bank. That is confirmation. Okay. Now, inspection of documents. It involves, this is basically I3. Inquiry, inspection, and inspection. Inspe it involves inspection of official documents. Official documents like purchase order, like GRN, like GDN, that is goods delivery note, that is a goods received note, that is invoice, etc. Any document, any document, like your bank statement is a document. For example, you ask me, uh, Mr. Harrison, what is your bank balance? I have answered you. This is the inquiry, the procedure from your side. And if you will inspect my bank statement, it's the inspection of document. And if you will be confirming it from the bank, it's known as the confirmation. Next, inspection of asset. It means physical inspection of the asset of the client entity. For example, I have told you that I have purchased a brand new machine uh, to facilitate my production. It is placed in the production room. So don't trust, don't trust, don't trust. Remember these things. I will be repeating in my audit journey this statement. Don't trust, verify. Don't trust, verify from the audit procedures. Okay. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, I have given you the information that there is a production machine I have purchased. You should go visit and inspect the asset. Yes. Verify. And then you are having this R2, that is recalculation and reperformance. Let's say, for example, uh, recalculation. It means auditor is recalculating the figures by his own to check the mathematical total or accuracy. Let's say, for example, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. For example, so you are the auditor. You will be picking up the calculator. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal. Yes, mathematical total is accurate. This is the recalculations. Reperformance. It means auditor is performing the same work by himself and then compare with the work done by the client management. For example, uh, for example, let's say there is a bank reconciliation, right? There is a bank reconciliation. I have prepared this bank reconciliation. You will be asking me, Mr. Harris, and if give me the bank reconciliation, I'm giving you the reconciliation. And uh, you, are, you are inspecting this and reviewing this reconciliation. Place it next to your table. You are preparing the bank reconciliation by yourself, and then you will be having a comparison. You will be having a comparison with your bank reconciliation with the client's bank reconciliation. So like you can say, like you can say, re-performing, re-performing the bank reconciliation. Now, next one is the O for observation. It means auditor's observation in the client entity of various things. When you will be going to the client entity, what things will you observe? For example, if you are the auditor, I will observe the employee attendance process. Example, employees attendance process. You will be observing hmm, control environment. Yes, control environment. You will be observing the control environment. You will be observing the system. You will be observing the culture ETC because you are the auditor and you are auditing the organization's financial statements. And these things leaves the footprints on the financial statements. Okay. So this is the, uh, these are, this included the Cairo audit procedure. Okay. Audit, audit procedure because you don't have to trust. You have to verify it from the audit procedures. Oh, very much important thing, audit opinion. As we all know that auditor express opinion, one is unmodified opinion and number two is modified opinions. 
unmodified opinion for example uh, uh, it's only it's only the opinion not the guarantee it's not the guarantee i must say it's not the guarantee it is the opinion that in my opinion it is what i want so the audit opinion is number one unmodified number one is unmodified number two is modified uh, when you are you are the auditor when you are expressing your opinion that this financial statement is true and fair so this is known as the clean opinion and it is say, uh, it is when auditor says that financial statements are true and fair it is when auditor says that financial statements are true and fair so this kind of opinion is known as unmodified opinion next modified opinions there are three types of modified opinions a qualified b adverse and c disclaimer uh, don't you people worry i am not covering this audit report this is again the introduction of the triple a this is the deep insight of the this is the recap of your some basic knowledge right so this is qualified opinion adverse opinion and then disclaimer opinion for example let's say there is a misstatement in receivables assuming assuming that there is a misstatement in the receivable balance and you asked me to correct it but i didn't so you can express the opinion like that way except for receivable what except for receivables financial statements are true and fair this is except for receivables financial statements are true and fair so it is known as except for financial statements are true and fair so when auditor express such kinds of the such kind of the uh, opinion that's known as the qualified opinion next adverse opinion let's say there is a misstatement in receivable there is a misstatement in non current asset there is a misstatement in revenue there is a misstatement in equity there is a misstatement in intangible the lot of misstatements and auditor is saying that no the entire financial statement is not true and fair such kind of opinion is known as the adverse opinion so it is when auditor says that financial statements are not true and fair that's it financial statements are not true and fair right number c disclaimer you know one thing just listen to me very much carefully it's your responsibility to perform the procedure you are the auditor it's my responsibility to give you the evidence it's my responsibility to give you people the evidence right so you you have asked some some evidences not a single many evidence i didn't provide that i did not provide that any evidence so you know what kind of opinion you can express you can express we do not express any opinion that's been mic in my hand what's your comment no comments such uh, like that way and you have to tell in the audit report that client entity has not provided a sufficient and appropriate evidence so it is when the auditor is having lack of evidences lack of evidences which is not sufficient which is not appropriate so the auditor can freely express that we are unable to express any opinion we are not expressing any opinion that's financial statement is true and fair no opinion not true and fair no opinion no opinion at all that is we do not express any opinion that is auditors auditors not expressing any opinion and you know you know it is very much harmful for the uh, for the company because it will destroy the image of the company because as the reader of the financial statements if you have got the knowledge uh, for example shareholder they will be saying that management is not providing the evidence it means there is something missing statement in the financial statements so the auditor is not expressing any opinion any opinion no opinion at all now that is known as the unmodified uh, uh, the, the modified opinions right unmodified is when auditor says that fs is true and fair fs financial statements modified opinion means qualified adverse and disclaimer except for fs true and fair 
this adverse not true and fair disclaimer no opinion now let's move ahead this is audit cycle and i'm sure that you have covered in your f8 double paper but still we have to understand in this triple exam because triple exam follows the very sensible direction i really like it, this thing and this is the audit cycle first of all number one auditor is appointed or reappointed we are in agm agm means annual general meeting and the next one audit engagement letter al what is audit engagement letter this is actually a contract this is actually a contract between firm and client entity client entity is actually the company because you are the auditor and you are running a profitable business and uh, i am the company and i am I'm, I'm your client i'm your audit client right so this is actually the company uh, first of all auditor is appointed and then there is a audit engagement letter al number 3 number 3 there is planning stage very 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 important as far as your exam focus is concerned because you will be receiving you know uh, the planning stage there is a very much important uh, thing that is known as risk assessment and only this topic risk assessment is alone worth 20 25 marks yes so risk assessment a very much important topic in the planning phase and then the audit is being performed which includes test of controls i'm sure you know the test of controls and the substantive test of controls that is toc and that is substantive substantive means test of financial statements in detailed manner again i'm saying that this is just the a uh, glimpse of the audit obviously it is not the it is not the topic it is the introduction to just like the refreshing your me audit memory okay so auditor appointed audit engagement letter planning stage performing stage and then and then review completion and reporting review completion and reporting like your audit report and your you know then audit opinion so this is basically your this is basically your uh, audit cycle so it is how does the audit audit is being performed right now now let's move a bit further this is very much important listen that if you are attempt, attempting paper afm you must need to understand your role your role in the paper is very much important if you are attempting paper sbr you should understand what role you are operating if you are attempting the paper apm so you should assume you should uh, imagine what role you are operating in the organization so similarly in your triple a paper in paper triple a you are acting as audit manager or quality review partner now what is this if i can give you a very uh, general hierarchy that is general hierarchy of firm it's general hierarchy of firm you know first of all there is audit partner audit partner you are not the audit partner there is audit manager there is audit manager there is audit supervisor this is general hierarchy you can extend the hierarchy based on the nature and size of the firm there is audit senior there is audit junior or you can call him like a trainee okay so this is actually the general hierarchy of the firm but in your triple a paper in your triple a paper you are acting you are acting as the audit manager so from now onwards i will be calling you audit managers okay 
So this is the audit manager and this is you are. You are in AAA paper. And when you were in paper F8 AA audit and assurance, so you will be acting these uh, as this role. And this is the audit partner who expresses the opinion. And uh, this is the audit manager. This is actually managing the audit. Managing the entire audit. Just like, let's say, for example, there is a bank branch manager. He is managing the, uh, he's managing the bank branch. For example, there is a finance manager. He's managing the entire finance. And you are the audit manager. You are managing the entire audit. So in this AAA paper, you will be either audit manager or the quality review partner. Now, who is the quality review partner? Uh, that is, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, as I've told you earlier, that uh, in your AAA exam, you have to manage the quality in your firm as well. So there is yet another partner. There is another partner not responsible for the opinion of the on the financial statements, but the quality partner is actually reviewing the overall quality of the audit. So this is the quality review partner. What's his task? That is review. That is review the quality in the firm. The quality in the firm. And this is the audit manager that is managing the entire audit. Okay. So in your triple exam, you will be acting, you will be acting either the audit manager, you will be acting either the audit manager, the quality review partner. Okay. This is basically your role in your triple A paper. And now, Audit partner expresses the opinion. Manager manages. Supervisor is actually supervising the line audit and audit senior and juniors. These two uh, actually apply the procedures. Apply procedures. Collect evidences. And audit supervisor supervises them. And manager is a very much important role. Obviously, when we will be looking at the exam requirement, so we will be able to understand in a better position that what is actually our task. But see that I will be calling you. Hello, audit managers. Okay, so you are the audit manager. Now, the very much important slide of this thing. And this is what some frequently repeated questions in AAA exam. Frequently repeated. Paper AAA is very much well structured. Paper AAA is very, very much well structured. Why? Because you, sometimes you know in advance approximately 70 to 80 percent of the requirements in advance. And if you can analyze the past papers, you will be receiving the, these frequently questions. In question number one, which worth for 50 marks, which worth for 50 marks, there is a to topic risk assessment must audit procedure must comment on ethical and professional issues must and from other areas we cannot uh, uh, predict those other areas right but these three collectively uh, becomes sometimes 40 marks sometimes 35 marks collectively these things in which risk assessment is a frequently examined requirement and yet in question number one the first requirement is the risk assessment next is of audit procedures and then on ethical issues so this is the structure of question number one. And in question number two and three, which worked for 25 marks, question number two and three, which works for 25 marks, these are the things that is comment on the matters. Uh, there will be accounting issues. There would be accounting issues and you are required to comment on the thing. Evidences which you expect to be in the working paper file. Now, what do you think? Think That is, you are reviewing the evidences. You are reviewing the what? Evidences obtained. You are reviewing the evidences obtained. And uh, this is an uh, audit senior and audit juniors have collected the evidences. Supervisor have, uh, supervisors have supervised them. And you are the audit manager. You are reviewing. What evidence will you bring? Uh, what evidence have you uh, brought here? What evidences are there? So you will be able to evaluate their procedures, evaluate their evidences. Okay. And that is evidence which you expect 
evidence which you expect in your working paper file. That is reviewing the evidences. And then after review, evaluation of evidence is obtained. Whatever the evidence is, you have to evaluate it. You have to evaluate the quality of the audit performed in the review stage. Quality of the audit, that is audit has been performed and you are reviewing. You are reviewing. Okay. So, evidences which you expect, reviewing the evidences, review the audit quality, audit report. In audit report, you may be receiving two kinds of requirement that is critical evaluation of audit report. That is audit report has been uh, drafted, has been drafted and its extracts given. And there will be extracts given of the audit report. And you have to now evaluate the quality. You have to evaluate the audit report. That is it audit report according to the standards. And there further will be impact on the audit report if the issues remain unresolved. In this kind of the exam requirement, you will be having the issues in your financial statements. And then you are the auditor. You are the auditor. It is being asked that if that financial statement issue is not resolved, what would be the impact on the audit report? Either it would be, either it would be uh, qualified, adverse, disclaimer, or unmodified, right? So there would be the impact on the audit report, right? The review stage assessment, like going concerns, subsequent events, that is uh, subsequent events, that is events after the reporting period, evaluation of identified misstatements in this area uh, there will be some misstatements there will be some misstatements and you have to evaluate whether the misstatement is material or not and then there will be other assignments and other areas as well very much important note these are the questions which are dominantly examined in triple a you can safely assume some other types of question as well okay so these are the things. Remember that in this question number one, you have to actually the you are conducting the planning of the audit. Planning of the audit. Again, I am repeating planning of the audit. That is the risk assessment, assessment and procedures to be applied along with some ethical issues. In question number two, audit has been done. You have to evaluate, evaluate the evidences. Evidence which you expect, evaluate. Quality of the audit performed, that's evaluation. Audit report, evaluation of the audit report. In this question number 23, mostly the audit work has been done and you are acting as a manager. For example, if I am the manager, I am looking at the thing, okay, this is done. Okay, this is wrong. Go do it again. Just like that way, you are acting as an audit manager, right? And then the final review stage of going concern and all that stuff and some other assignments. So these are the frequently examined requirements. And then uh, we will be solving, we, we will be studying what will be the procedure of the study that is understanding of the topic, examples and the questions. Okay. So this video is still here. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.